Lisa, it's time to talk about the Chicago Red Stars. Two teams, one game that we're talking about here on this episode. It almost feels a little bit funny because we're so used to covering multiple games at once in, in a preview, but here we are just covering the one big game. Uh, Chicago Red Stars finding their themselves back in an NWSL championship final. This is a team uh, that was in the championship final back in 2019. There was no regular season in 2020, and yet Chicago was a team that found themselves in the Challenge Cup final as well in 2020 and now here they are the return of a regular season a post regular season a post playoff picture they were involved in the mix and now they find themselves once again in a playoff and a championship scenario so let's maybe jump into where we left off with the the spirit a little bit there maybe talking about something like their arrival to this moment a lot of young pieces to that team maybe the inexperience is going to be something that comes into play. So when looking at Chicago, is something like experience of this moment going to aid them and persuade them into finally perhaps getting an NWSL championship title for the franchise? I, again, we don't know. I just feel like this these two teams going head-to-head in the championship final, I think there's just a real 50-50 shot. It's a real flip of the coin, I think, Lisa, in, in this preview as we're going over these teams and, and what their strengths are, what their opportunities could be. And in terms of Chicago, I think maybe, yes, it's it's something if, if they had the full, uh, you know, roster available to them, that something like circling the offensive front could be something that uh, that that we could talk about for the team. Um but, you know, something that I noticed the, the night before, uh, the Red Stars sort of making their arrival into Louisville, uh, very excited, uh, posting on social media on the team's direct channel. And there was a team walk off of the bus and an entire thread of small videos that took place, uh, sort of showing everyone coming off of the bus and the biggest thing uh, that I think was noticeable about that, because that's our jobs as media, part of our jobs is to observe and uh, just observe that there was no Mallory Pugh coming off of this bus. There was no Kalia Watt, no Kayla Sharples, no Casey Kruger. So this is not an unfamiliar territory for this Red Stars team. It's a, basically a similar scenario that they were facing heading into their semifinal. Lisa, perhaps the only adage there is, is a Kalia Watt who, when we saw her come out of that semifinal match against Portland Thorns, it did not look very promising. Although, you know, there's a there's still still a little question mark uh, around that. So I think maybe if you're looking at something like, oh, is it, there's a full roster available here for Chicago? Yeah, you're circling these specific players, but that might not necessarily be the case for them on Saturday. So I think if we're looking at the Chicago Red Stars teams and talking about their strengths and their opportunities, I think we absolutely have to look at their midfield. Their midfield has been immense for them throughout the entire regular season, but uh, more so than ever during this playoff stretch of games where they had to play that extra game. They were one of the teams that had to play a quarterfinal, similar to the Spirit, then found themselves in a semifinal and now preparing for an NWSL championship final. And they really, really got through on some extent, like outstanding play from their from their midfield core. Morgan Gatra, we've been talking a lot about her on attacking third this season. And again, having uh, an MVP type season for her team, really putting in the work and uh, walking away with player of the match honors for that semifinal. And uh, I think it really does sort of begin and end with with this particular player. Sarah Waldmo extending the lead in that semifinal, another one of their midfielders who have has had a, a great uh, amount of success for them in that middle third. And uh, I think it will really, really be dependent on how the midfield can or cannot <laughs> find themselves sort of dictating the temple and that, and that middle third to sort of see how things go. Um, and it's going to maybe come down to that. So Chicago has sort of been doing that this year, Lisa, they've gone into their games with a, with a bit of a, a game plan. And we've sort of seen them, especially in these two uh, playoff rounds, ahead of the final, just sort of go in there and absolutely execute it, no matter who the personnel is on the pitch. Even if in one of your biggest games, one of your main players comes out with an injury, you slot somebody else in there and you still stick to your game plan and succeed. So I'm a little curious as to what exactly that game plan actually might be 
in this uh, championship final because that's another thing that the Red Stars have shown us a little bit uh, during this final half, final third stretch of the season into the playoffs is their ability to sort of adjust Mm -hmm. and sort of adjust based on their uh, opposition in front of them. So I'm very curious and excited to see how they're going to be um, uh, trying to keep that high attack, high octane attack from the spirit at bay in this match. And for Chicago, we've seen time and time again, they show up to games with a different game plan based on their opponents or Rory Deans will switch things at the half uh, because his his brain works like that so quickly and intently, but he needs to communicate that to the players. So there will be a game plan here because for Chicago, these are big pieces that are missing for them, especially in their attack. Mallory Pugh was out for the semifinal match completely, which we knew about leading into that. Um, Now to not have her again for the final, that it hurts Chicago a little bit for sure. Uh, However, they do, they did still have Kalia Watt for the semifinal. And when she went down, yeah, Chicago still was able to win that game against Portland and score goals without Pugh and Watt up top. But uh, they're big pieces to be missing, um, and, and Washington Spirit is aware of that. And Sandra, you said it best. Without some of these star attacking players in the front line for Chicago, the Red Stars are going to rely on their midfield unit. Um, they have to. There's there's no way about it. Katie Johnson, I'm sure, will slot in as the number nine center striker position. That's that's who went in for Kulia Watt after Watt went down in the semifinals. So I, I imagine that Johnson will get the start as that center number nine striker. Um, She does a fantastic job. She is a really good player and she's been playing alongside or subbing in for Watt throughout the entirety of this season and been learning a lot from her. Having that relationship between two forwards is key, especially in moments like this when Katie Johnson now needs to step up and and fill those holes that Pugh and Watt are both leading. Um, And Johnson has a different approach to the game than Watt does, or or even Pugh in that sense. Um, She has a lot of creativity going forward, and she's not afraid to take things herself. But um, we see her dishing the ball off a lot. She did score in in the semifinal match, and I think that that's the energy that Johnson needs to bring through this game. If she gets just a window of space to shoot the ball, she has to let it rip, and she has to let it rip with confidence, just assuming it's going to find the back of the net. To have that confidence as a striker when you're shooting the ball, um, it it really translates into the shot and the power and the technique of how you shoot it and and ultimately hope to find the back of the net. Um, And to have Katie Johnson in the attacking end will provide a lot for Chicago, but they need to rely on their midfield. And it's a midfield that has had their moments of great attack and moments of great unity, Um, But now is a game when they need to have players like Vanessa DiBernardo pushing forward almost every single play to get into the attack and to contribute because she is one of the veteran players that has a lot of minutes under her belt as a Red Star um, under with Rory Dames and knowing how to play in these big time game moments. So I think a player like DiBernardo is someone that a lot of eyes should be tuned in on. If she can be that attacking support player for Johnson and Hill up top it'll make a difference for this team, knowing that Waldmo and behind is holding and that defensively trust your defense. Um, So I could see Chicago exposing themselves a little bit more than they have earlier in the season, while also understanding that a team like Washington Spirit, with all of the speed they have up top, they can play a quick transition and get in behind. So it's that balance that is going to be tricky for the Chicago midfield to do, but, um, I think they'll find it and they will be fine with it. And uh, looking back to the semifinal match against Portland for Chicago, Cassie Miller, goalkeeper for the Red Stars, fantastic game. She had seven saves against Portland. Um, In in that match, Portland was very heavily attacking against Chicago and Chicago tried to bunker in and, and play that defensive style that they can do while then quickly looking to spring forward and get into the attack. But they can't let that happen against Washington Spirit. There's too many times that Spirit have uh, forced opponents to make mistakes defensively, and then they just jump on top of the ball. So Portland had 24 crosses against Chicago in the semifinal match. Um, That's a stat 
that, that if I'm Rory James and I'm Chicago, I'm looking at and saying, we need to eliminate all of those crosses coming into the box and not just rely on Miller in goal to jump up and grab all the balls and save them. Um, so that's one of the biggest areas that will be really fun to see how it unfolds on the pitch. If Washington continues to go forward and attack and, and look to go centrally, or maybe they look to keep the ball wide and send crosses in, how can Chicago defend that, keep the ball, and then move forward down the field um, without having Watt and Pew up top? That's the biggest question mark. And I think that's really tricky for Washington as well to kind of assess how they're going to scout a, a team like Chicago, not knowing what their game plan is going to be because it will be different in this match. So the first 10 minutes of this championship final, it'll be a lot of reading, a lot of reading your opponents, understanding what they're bringing to the table, understanding how they're looking to attack. Um, and then we'll see pieces being changed, whether it's personnel on the field, changing positions, pushing in, in tighter into the midfield or actually spreading out wider, looking to uh, attack the flanks and get numbers up on in the wide areas of the field. So at the 10 minute mark, 15 minute mark, Sandra, I'll shoot you a text. We'll see what's happening in the game, but everyone watching this final on Saturday, watch around 10, 15 minutes, you'll see some shifts happening. That's when the game will maybe start to open up a little bit uh, because both sides are understanding what their opponents are throwing at them. And in this match more than ever, because of all the changes and the injuries, it, it'll take some time for Washington to figure out what Chicago is giving them and vice versa, Chicago to Washington. Yeah. It's almost like, I, I wonder which team is actually going to have the ball. <laughs> like which team yeah. is actually going to want the ball in this one is, is, is either of these teams going to actually want the ball? Uh, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I don't think, um, I think it's unfair for us to sort of transition into our, our next segment uh, without talking about another key component uh, of the Red Stars who, who absolutely has to have a, a strong game as well. They've been a significant part, significant part of their game plan as well. You've touched on it a little bit already, Lisa, but that defensive back line, mm -hmm. um, the Chicago Red Star squad has found themselves uh, getting into this championship final on narrow score lines and shutouts uh, in, in their final results uh, stemming as, further back, you know, before the quarterfinal began. Uh, so this back line, you know, anchored by Sarah Gordon, the defender of the year candidate, Chicago's iron woman playing every single minute of the regular season, uh, her center back partner, Tierna Davidson, uh, and their outside back uh, in, in Aaron War in Aaron Wright. And uh, Tatum Alasso has gotten two consecutive starts for this team at the outside back position in light of uh, Casey Kruger being out. So this is uh, another moment. Um, for this uh, defensive back line to, to try to see uh, what they're really about, because I think this is probably, I, if you ask them, this is probably their biggest test of the year, right? It's the biggest game of the year. And so it'll obviously be their biggest test uh, of the year going up against, you know, this sort of attacking offense that contains a Rodman, a Hatch and a Sanchez. Right. So I think that's, um, I think that's another maybe easy one for people who are looking the, the casual fans who are coming in to just take a look perhaps at the biggest event of the year and end WSL if they're looking for for matchups that maybe they're looking at Chicago's back line going up against that that strong front line of uh, Washington spirit 